Welcome back to my channel where I take you on tours of unique spaces. In today's video, we're gonna meet two brothers with seemingly opposite passions that they combined to create something truly amazing, a backyard super adobe dome that they use as a tea tasting room. Let's meet Sunny and Tommy to take a tour and learn more. I'm Sonny. And I'm Tommy. And this is a project Tommy and I have been working on together for about a year now. I built this dome for him. We call it Tommy's Tea Dome. So let's go take a look. So the main part of my tea house here is hosting tea tastings. This is my main um, tea station. This is kind of where all the magic happens, all the tea brewing and spilling and sharing of stories. For anybody wanting to get into tea, it's best to source it from somewhere other than a grocery store. So an experience such as this or a tea house would be optimal. So I used to have like this small tea setup in my room, but after being into tea for a while, I decided that I wanted my own specific dedicated space for this art. So as part of my experience, it's not only just the serving of tea, but it's everything around me. The idea behind this tea house was just to provide a space to share with others, to share tea and stories. This is constructed out of super adobe, which is not too well known of a material, but it kind of takes traditional adobe and it mixes it with modern technology. We're filling bags of soil rather than making little bricks. This whole structure is actually made out of, you know, nothing more than the soil beneath our feet here. So it's, it's really sustainable in that. So we're on the south side of the dome now, and this is basically what you need to build one of these. And it, you know, it doesn't look like much, but this is actually what it takes to build something like this. We're just talking a shovel, barbed wire, We've got a coffee can, and this coffee can's for filling these bags right here. So we're, we're basically building this structure in layers, and then we'll go layer by layer. And then in between the layers, uh, we've got barbed wire. We just cut to the length that you need. You lay that down, you keep stacking. It's, it's really simple, honestly. This is more of the entrance of the dome. And on the side, we've got a character, which is the same in Japanese as it is in Chinese. And this just means tea. Yeah, this whole project just, it worked out really nice because, you know, I'm passionate about building things, creating things. And, you know, I could build my brother something he would really cherish. And, and you know, his passion worked with that. So it, it just worked out really nice. Yeah, because I had a lot of fun just kind of planning and being involved in it um, because I can't really build myself. Yeah. But even then, I felt like I was a major part of it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. He would come out here when it's, you know, a little bit built, drive in here, and we just kind of come up with, uh, you know, where are we going to put this, uh, uh, what works best, like, you know, the outlet on the ground, put it in the exact spot he needed it. The bench wasn't too close to his table, you know, things like that. So he got to be involved in the whole process, which was really cool. found these windows online and Tommy and I, we created the design of the whole dome around these windows. Here we've got what we call an eyebrow. It overhangs just a little bit so that rain will, you know, dissipate this way as opposed to straight into the window. And we've also got another element, this right here. It's actually a structural element. It's called a buttress. This reinforces the whole dome. This is the weakest part. It also acts as a bench. And so that, that is, that's a nice element that I intentionally designed. Probably notice this chimney here, wondering what kind of what kind of heating's going on in this in this dome. But I've constructed a rocket stove. It's a very sustainable way of heating a structure. So now this is the actual entrance of the dome. 
and we didn't do too many cosmetic features on the dome. We kept it pretty simple, but something I'd like to point out is the bottle wall I designed up here. The light shines through beautifully uh, in the summer, you know, shines right through here. And also at night, the, the light from the inside, you'll see this, this whole wall glowing. It's beautiful. We'll take you on inside. So this right here is the, uh, the rocket stove we were talking about on the exterior. You know, a rocket stove is, for those of you who don't know, it's a stove that's, you know, similar to a wood burning stove, but instead of the smoke exiting the chimney, you're actually utilizing the smoke and you're combusting that smoke. And so it's very efficient, you know, people who use four cords of wood in a, in a wood burning stove, they would use about one quart of wood. It's, it's that much more efficient. Another key element that is different, that's the bench over here. There's pipes running through the bench and then the bench is made out of, of cob, which is clay, straw, sand, and rocks. But basically all that stuff, it'll take all the heat, it'll absorb it and hold on to it for you know, a couple days. So this whole thing heats up, you know, you sit on it, you get nice and warm. It's, it's just very efficient overall. So we're here inside the dome and this is my main area where I keep most of my teaware collection. But the majority of the teaware I have, it's mainly from Japan or China. And this bowl here is probably one of my favorites. I'd actually say it's almost my holy grail. It's just a Japanese bowl for drinking tea. And today I'm just gonna be showing you guys a little sneak peek of what goes on during one of these tea tastings. This is a Liu Bao tea, which is from Guangxi, China. It's a very unique tea as it's post-fermented and stored in baskets for several years. Uh, this one is from 2008, so it's got a pretty good amount of age on it. I use a scale to be sort of like more specific. Sort of the only thing I keep track of is that and the temperature. And uh, this is a Japanese water boiler that I got. It's sort of like the main thing I use to heat my water for the tea house. And it holds about four liters of water. So when you come for an experience, plenty of tea flowing. So when people come to visit for tea, sometimes they don't really know like what to expect. They maybe expect to like sit down and have like one or maybe a few cups of tea. But with this brewing method, the idea is to pack a teapot full of leaves and do multiple steepings over a longer period of time. So generally within a session, we'll steep like a tea like this up to 10 times. And as you go through them, the flavor changes, which is really exciting. A main part of tea is sharing, and not only do we share the tea, but we just share all our knowledge about it as well. I've had many people here before with uh, different experiences with tea, and for the most part, it's been awesome experiences with awesome people. So as for the future of my tea house and my tea tasting experiences, I'm just really looking forward to hosting more people and getting a bunch of money to spend on more tea to serve to more people and share with them some really rare and interesting teas and hopefully teach them a bit as well. Thanks for watching this week's video. Make sure to check back next Friday for an all new video tour of a unique space.